Hey guys, Maddie Wilbanks here. Um, today I will be talking about training in godliness. 1 Timothy 4, 7-10 says, Have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this reason we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. First of all, it is important to distinguish that, although godliness is of great benefit, it is not a means of salvation. You can't do a single thing to make God love us any more than He already does. Rather, we are only truly redeemed when we accept the free gift of Christ's sacrifice. So why do we need to train in godliness? Well, looking back at verse 10, it says, We labor and strive because we put our hope in a living God. We, as followers of Christ, are called to live by God's ways and not the ways of the world. But it's not always so easy. Just because we desire to know God and draw closer to Him, doesn't automatically make us a super Christian. Reading the Word of God every day, praying all the time, and talking about God to everyone you know. Although, if you are some kind of super Christian, please tell me your secrets. Like any other area where we need to grow, we have to put in work. Just as cadets, we may train our bodies for the PFE or do military trainings so that we know how to be Coast Guard officers or train our minds by studying for a test. Even more importantly, we need to train in godliness to be more like the image of God, like He created us to be. Training in godliness helps us to grow closer to the goal of love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, like it says in Luke 10, 27, and Matthew 22, 37, and Mark 12, 30, and so I'll place do it around me. That's a lot of times. Anyway, what does training in godliness look like? Well, the good news is 2 Peter 1.3 tells us that God's divine power has already given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. So we have everything we need available. We just need to put it to good use. Other people think of practicing the fruits of the Spirit or studying God's Word and praying, which are all very good things, but it goes just a little deeper than that. Someone could probably read the whole Bible ten times through and still not achieve godliness. In Galatians 5.25 it says to walk in step with the Spirit, and 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. So at its root, godliness is a heart posture. So let's examine ourselves as we're reading the Bible, or worshiping, or praying, or serving others, or mourning, or celebrating, or pouring out, or resting up, whatever we're doing. Is our heart really aligned with God? And have we devoted everything we have to our relationship with God? I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit daunting. Not to worry though, like Paul says in Philippians 3, 12 through 14, not that I have already achieved the goal, or I'm already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I have because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I press on towards the goal of the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. So we're never going to be perfect while we're here on this earth. You can come to God just as you are, but we can keep pressing on. We can always dive deeper in our relationship with God. So this week I challenge you to think about how you're spending your precious time and try to spend some of it training in godliness and aligning your heart with God. And remember, God does not call the prepared, 
he prepares the cult. That's all for now, folks. Please like and subscribe and all that jazz, and God bless.